Nature provides us with 100% of the energy we need. If I could bring this fuel to America, it would radically change everything that was going on. This could change the world. Josh Tickell. Josh Tickell. Josh Tickell. Josh Please welcome Josh Tickell. Josh Tickell. Josh Tickell. Josh Tickell from the movie Fuel. Energy underpins water, it underpins food, it underpins our policies, it underpins how we interact inside of an economy. Every species that has not gone extinct has learned to adapt. By 2025, I believe production in terms of solar power production will fall to a penny per kilowatt hour produced. This is Moore's Law. Again, follow the curves. They're only going one direction. We are in an international economic and environmental crisis. We get that these are big problems. Big problems have big solutions. They require big thinking. Now tell folks a little bit about uh, who you are, where you're from, the whole deal. Well, I wanted to thank you, Jay, for having me on the show because you're a car guy and you know we made this movie in a garage. I understand that. I'm an author and a filmmaker, all around green energy. Now I learned something from your film, this is rather interesting, uh, about uh, Henry Ford. Henry Ford originally developed the Model T to run on ethanol and tell people what happened there. Right, it's an amazing story. So here's this visionary founder of our auto industry, you know, the American mm -hmm. auto industry. This is the guy, Henry Ford. And he designs his first cars to actually run on alcohol. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, there's more fuel in that vegetable matter by the side of the road than there'll ever be in an oil right. patch. So farmers could make their own fuel exactly. and then drive their own car. Yeah, this is the American independence. This right. is the original idea of, you know, patriotism. What else can we use to replace foreign oil? It's, it's amazing. You know, we show in the film fuel, we show this barrel of solutions. And it's really, how do we, how do we replace the typical barrel? Well, mm -hmm. there's energy efficiency, there's solar, there's right. wind, there's biomass. Why are we ad so addicted to oil? Why do you think that is as a country? I think, I think we want freedom. You know, right. America, America is the country about freedom. Mm -hmm. We love our cars, we love our roads. We just missed a step in creating all of that, making sure that it's green. Well, I just thought it was fascinating. You had some real interesting, fascinating solutions that look workable. Thank you, my friend. Thank Josh, you, Josh, thanks for bringing us to us. Thank you. Very right back. Do we need to redesign society from scratch. Much of the big fix that we find ourselves in today dates back to 1971. When U.S. production of oil peaked, right after that, of course, imports skyrocketed, and the trade deficit began expanding. The dollar, which had been backed by gold, was totally destabilized as the U.S. hemorrhaged gold. So Nixon had a very important decision to make. He had to decide what to back the dollar on. He met with King Faisal at the White House, and in that meeting, what transpired would set in motion the economic crisis that we see today. You see, three months after that meeting, Nixon took the dollar off the international gold standard, and he put it onto oil, essentially floating the U.S. economy on the value of oil. This then fixed the U.S. economy to oil for the foreseeable future. In 2050, we're going to have a radically different world. The images that I see of tomorrow in science fiction are very dark for the most part. So one of the interesting things that I look at being in the environmental movement, I've been in the environmental movement since I was six years old, held my first protest sign when I was six, and have lived in that movement for over 30 years. So I continuously look at the doctrine of environmentalism. And how is that playing out in our world? The future that we're living into could be very bright. It could be much brighter than today. We stand at that crossroads between the dystopic, dark future and a future that's much brighter. But who's to say that either one isn't just a creation of neurochemicals in our mind? that the ability to perceive what's next dictates what's next.
Look physically, physically at our world. The physical sign of how the world is evolving looks like a new epistem. This looks like new neural connections. It looks like new thought. These internet connections, this global mind that we're sharing where problems can be real time converted to solutions with people you've never met, crowdsourced instantaneously to a billion points of light, instantaneously answers, ideas, creating a whole new world. I think we can get there. I am hopeful about the future. Around the world, we're seeing a new model emerge. And that new model is based on distributed control, distributed power, stewardship, cyclical systems, collaboration, and the democratic community of communities. And what's important about this is this is an epistemological shift from a society that's parasitic to one that is symbiotic. It is not a shift given by technology. It is a shift that will give us new technologies, but the fundamentals of the shift are in philosophy. By 2035, we're going to see the developed nations. Essentially, electricity will be free. Essentially, electricity will be at zero. Just as hard drive space, just as storage space, just as the transmission of, 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 of ones and zeros today, we're just talking about transmission of electrons. We're just shifting what we're transmitting. San Francisco has got 107 miles of rail line, 46 train stations. Los Angeles destroyed its public transportation system to make room for cars. We think that bigger freeways are better, but we know that bigger freeways equal more cars, which equal bigger freeways, which is why San Francisco has trains and we have Carmageddon. <laughs> So we see signs of hope. We see great signs of hope everywhere. Across the Midwest, biorefineries are popping up. That's a bulk of the 2.7 million new green jobs in the United States. Farmers markets in our cities, redesigning society from scratch. That's an inevitability. The big question is, will we do it by choice? Thank you. This is the moment where we launch the rocket for the next generation of America's energy. What if you could get 150 miles per gallon on algae? All right, algae, good with algae. Here we go. Today is an auspicious day. We've just completed the first cross-country journey in a car like this one, but I assure you it won't be the last. 